So as uh, I was saying, thank you very much for organizing the Congress. Uh, maybe the next time we'll be on site. It will be <laughs> great, but it's re really good uh, that uh, it's still ongoing even uh, when all the problems about uh, COVID pandemic. So um, first of all, uh, we will, uh, I will introduce uh, myself, uh, Mathieu. We are from the University of Sevilla. Uh, we are experts. Uh, we work in logic and argumentation theory. Uh, we are from philosophy, and uh, here we uh, we try to um, to explain uh, our work on mirativity and the lack of evidence. In fact, uh, the main focus uh, of our talk is the communication and language, how the language is expressed in different languages, how the knowledge is expressed in different languages, uh, how the assertion and negation are associated with different kinds of knowledge and experience, but also with the way of a community communicates them. Uh, the communication involves language, a third tongue aspect, and use of which can be clarified by means of modern formal tools. And this is exactly what we do, is how we study how the expression of knowledge through different language has changed by using an, an, an analytical methodology. Uh, here, concretely, we focus in mediativity, that is a grammatical category or linguistic strategy that makes explicit the surprising aspect of a piece of information. An agent makes use of a mediativity marker when she expresses something about the fact surprising with respect to her background knowledge. And whether mediativity forms part of evidentiality or not is an open question, as is already now. Uh, evidentiality is same, that uh, is a linguistic category, by means of which source of our knowledge are made explicit. And mere activity is rather in concern with the status of information and its surprising character. In fact, according to the Lancet, mere activity meanings reflect the status of the proposition with respect to the speaker's overall knowledge structure. That is, mere activity expresses the surprise that come along the unexpected uh, of a fact. So whereas evidentiality express the source of information, mirativity conveyed the speaker's surprise. It seemed really clear the difference between the two of them, but uh, what we try to explain here is it's not so clear this difference. So from a linguistic point of view, mirativity meaning subsume the concept of a sudden discovery, surprise and express an unprepared mind of the speaker, if we follow um, I can ball studies, but also the unexpectation of the audience. It expressed the counter expectation of a new information. And there are different types of mirativity, uh, and we will focus in these two types, sample mirativity and complex mirativity. Uh, here we take an example from CAM, taken from I can ball, and it will be Jubruja has arrived. Uh, this happened when the speaker has invited some people at home and Shuburya arrived uninvited and unexpected. Uh, what is important is that they express the surprising status of the information that, that is transmitted. We will see later how it changed with complex mirativity. Uh, complex uh, mirativity um, is uh, she's wearing a blanket also from CAM. And this sentence is uttered by an agent when she or he say that Maya is wearing a blanket on the basis of her as finding a partially completed blanket attached to the loom in Maya's room. Following the Lancet again, Olio marks the absence of evidence. The only evidence the speaker has is that there is an unfinished blanket, not that Maya was feeling it. It's, the, it's really a different structure to the sample minority that we have before. But here is our point. We would like to check uh, this structure of mirativity with what is called inferred evidential. Uh, mirativity and evidentiality maintain um, a strong and conflict relationship. A connection can be found at inferential level in comparison with the inferent evidential. Inferred evidential cover inference based on visual evidence, assumption, and various kinds of reasoning. And here is a point exactly. Evidentiality is about the source of knowledge. Depending on the early underlying system, inferred evidential are usually expressed by means of Nostker has evidential or inferred evidential markers, depending on the language. 
the fact that different kinds of inference and assumption can be involved will have consequence in the term of the commitment carried by such ad utterance. Indeed, a speaker who is communicating the result of an inference, whether it be based on first-hand or not first-hand evidence, is only committed with a conjecture. And this is important, and need not be assent to its true as if she was asserting it. Here we have an example of inferred evidential, the dog stole the fish from Tucano. And uh, from this example, Eichenwald affirms that this evidential might be used when someone comes into the kitchen and see that the fish is gone. They are bones and there is a dog which look happily and satisfied. The speaker has a visual evidence of what she actually see. The bone and the dog seem happy and satisfied, but not that the dog ate the fish. What is expressed is the result of an inference based upon this visual evidence. Here is another example of inferred evidence that we will check uh, again with the, other, with the other one and we'll see really the difference. Uh, here it's from Safiki, at, uh, uh, again from Eichenwald, say Manuel Aids, but the important point is that the speaker see the dirty dishes. What is expressed is the result of an inference based on a physical evidence, the dirty dishes. The lower degree of commitment can be explained by the fact that someone else, else might have eaten in these dirty dishes, so it's still conjectural. Nevertheless, this other inferred evidential, Manuel Aids, is uh, reflected, he always eats at eight o'clock and it's now nine o'clock. It's completely different. This inference based on a general knowledge is called assumed, evidential by Eichenbach. So there is no direct evidence of anything. Given that Manuel always eats at eight o'clock, it is inferred that today he will have eaten at eight o'clock as well. But we do not have the dirty dishes, in fact. So, inferred evidential and mirativity, why to take them uh, together? Inferred evidential expresses a non commitment of the speaker with the source. The source is indirect and inferential. Not all inferred evidential have a mirativity overtone. This lacks example, for example, has not. He will see later on, uh, as we will see later on, this might be linked to the inference underlying the inferred evidential. So uh, we would like to take also into account what is called uh, deferral realization. Deferral realization is not like mere activity evidentially. It is not proper referred to a category, but a future of several distinct category. It's conveying information obtained in post factum. And they often have a mirative overtone, in particular when the post factum interpretation gives rise to an expected result. In system in which mere activity is associated with inference, the fair realization is an integral part of mirative meaning, but whether they must or must not have their mirative overtone remain an open question according to Eichenwald. It's also unclear whether or not they should always involve inferential dimension. We will see later uh, this in these examples also. Here we have an example of the fair realization. I was at the store but uh, was not aware of it at the time. It came from Western Apache, and this morphine is a mark of a storyteller, that this non-narrative journal archive uh, an overtone of past deferral realization. The speaker was not aware of the event when it occurred, but, the, uh, but she realized later. The speaker has no personal recognition that she was in a store. She might be unconscious, you know, temporarily lost her memory, whatever. Uh, she realized that because the, uh, she could have been told about it or infer it. Deferred realization, so, is a semantic future that appears in numerous inferred evidential, that is true, and even evidentiality strategy through other grammatic form. Most of the time, it seems to have a mirativity overtone, but as we'll see, not always. Properly say, it is the expression of an inference box factum, which usually has a surprise tone. Nevertheless, is there always a link between the federalization and inferential evidentiality and mirativity? Or are there forms of the federalization or post factum inference without surprise? Up to now, in fact, we have seen how the surprise in mirativity construction appears in different languages. The link with the unprepared mind in a complex mirativity structure as a narrow link with what is called inferential evidential. 
And at least in some cases, they are also linked by a semantic nuance called the federalization. Uh, so given that the, the notion of inference is explicitly invoked in these linguistic studies, uh, we think that the philosophical analysis of this concept based on theory of argumentation turn out to be relevant in order to understand the manifestation of surprise, immerativity and evidentiality through the language structure. So here we, uh, we start with the concept uh, properly of inference. Uh, most of the time, when we use inference, it's used to mean deductive inference. For example, the following schema represents a deductively valid inference. From the premise one and two, we have the conclusion three. So we have alpha, then beta. We have alpha, we obtain beta. Nevertheless, there is another kind of inference, which is called abductive inference, which is schematic uh, uh, form. It will be the, the following. We have alpha, then beta. We have beta, then alpha. This schema represents what Aristotle called affirming the consequence fallacy, and it seems a correct uh, deductive inference, but it's not. In fact, what is most interesting in this abduction, uh, this kind of inference, is that this abduction always begins with a surprise. If we follow uh, Pearson, uh, Pierce abduction, uh, and we follow Wood's uh, approach to peer subduction, surprise can be understood in terms of ignorance problem, which acts as a cognitive irritant and trigger a cognitive response of the agent. If there is a question Q and some proposition alpha, that will be answered. An agent who has not alpha in her present knowledge base has an ignorance problem with respect to Q. In front of an ignorance problem, there are three attitudes are possible. Subduance, no knowledge from the ignorance, surrender, the agent give up and does not look uh, for another answer, or abduction. A hypothesis is set as a basis of new action. In fact, uh, following the letter to Lady Welby, also written by Piers, and the, the paper of uh, Bellucci and Pietarini, we call abductive conclusion can thus be referred to as an investigant, an abduction colored reasoning from surprise to inquiry. Here, I, I will follow a little bit uh, Gavai and Good's model for abduction, uh, but uh, the most important part that I would like to show, we would like to show is that abduction began with a surprise. It's an inference, but this inference is completely linked to a surprising aspect. So we start with a triggering problem, is a cognitive irritant problem relative in response to which an agent set T has a epistemic target at a given time with respect to an answer question Q, to which alpha will be the answer. In fact, the agent does not know the answer of the question Q. The agent is not able to produce an answer in a timely way. The hypothesis H does not pertain to K. The hypothesis H that doesn't pertain to a uh, star, and there is not a time in relation. Well, uh, seven, uh, there is not a time in relation between K uh, reached by H and T. Uh, we, uh, but uh, um, in fact, I will skip this part, and I want to just uh, express clear that the action conjecture and hypothesis, and the important part is that he has not knowledge or do it. It's just an hypothesis, and this is a kind of inference. The hypothesis is relays in an ignorance-preserving way. In fact, we do not have evidence for that. Uh, the Gavayan Woods model of abduction offer a tool to point at some similarity between complex mirativity and inferred evidential. Abduction is an inference that processes from surprise to hypothesis at least in some of its manifestation in natural language, complex mirativity reflects, uh, refer back to an abductive inference triggered by a surprising information. This is exactly the surprising part of complex mirativity. It came from the inference itself. Mirativity thus specify the source of information. And this is important because an abductive inference is indissociable from a surprising element. In fact, where a simple mirativity is usually confined to the expression of surprising fact. Complex mirativity expresses a conjecture set in response to such a surprise. Here we have the other cases. 
Uh, the first uh, example, Jupiter arrive, we have a case of simple mirativity. I do not seem, it, it, it do not seem to be related to any inferential process. The speaker only expressed his surprise with respect to an unexpected fact. Mm -hmm. Simple mirativity is the mark of an unprepared mind and its function in natural language, dialogical interaction, is to convey the surprise to the hearer. According to Eichenwald, mirativity is a separate linguistic category different from evidentiality. She advanced various reasons. They are different in their semantic uses and occurrence with other category and the surprising reaction might be from any source. But there are another argument, which is precisely the one we are concerned with here. In line with the Lancet, we consider that mirativity meaning reflect the status of the proposition with respect to the speaker over our knowledge structure, and waters who think that mirativity make no claim about the source of information, I can ban claim that mirativity does not deal with evidence, but with no evidence. With nevertheless, complex mirativity, without claiming that mirativity is a subcategory of evidentiality, we think case of complex mirative, in which the surprising overtone is itself an indication of the inferential source of information. So she's weaving a blanket. It's a case of complex mirative in which the source of information is an abductive inference. It is therefore difficult and even impossible, delimited clearly when the surprise ends and when the source of information starts. Indeed, Maya is weaving a blanket, it's uttered by the speaker who see as unfinished blankets in the loom of her room. So the source of information conveyed by this utterance is not a direct perception, but an inferring triggering by a direct perception of another fact, the blanket in the loom. It's a defensible inferred by an abduction trigger by a surprising fact. So it's true that there is no direct evidence in what's expressed by the statement and that uh, come first a state of ignorance, but this does not mean that it's not concerned with the source of information. In an abduction, if an abduction is the source of information, as it seems to be the case in this example, then it cannot be dissociated from the, its intrinsic surprising element. Therefore, complex mirativity may also concern with the source of information as well as inferred evidentially. Although mirativity is concerned with the lack of knowledge or piece of evidence, it might provide indication about the source of information. The dog stole the fish. Uh, they are used to express an indirect source of information, in particular proceeds from an inference. The underlying inference is also an abduction. Whereas complex mirativity might be the mark of an underlying abductive inference, abductively inferred evidential involves a surprising element due to the nature of the abduction itself. Eventually, it shared a structure similar to complex mirativity, which was excluded from evidentiality. Mirativity appears to be more explicitly with respect to the surprise conveyed by the utterance, but if inferred evidentiality can also be in some cases plain by term of abductive inference, that it must be recognized that it's also involved an indissociable initial surprise. On the other hand, mirativity can be concerned with the source of information, as is the case in complex mirativity. On, one, on the other hand, on the one hand, on the other hand, surprise characteristic of mirativity can also involve in inferred evidentiality. Here we have the other two examples of uh, uh, inferred evidentiality. Manuel adds, the speaker see the dirty dishes. This one, it will be an inference, uh, abductive inference. Nevertheless, Manuel ate, he always ate at eight o'clock and it's now in luck. There is no surprise because we, it is an inference based on induction. Manuel had always eaten at 8 o'clock in the past, he has eaten at 8 o'clock tonight. Actually, it might also be the result of a deduction. If it's inferred that Manuel ate at 8 o'clock from the general law, Manuel always ate at, uh, at 8. So in the first, it will be the case of abduction, and the second, it could be induction or deduction. Uh, here, I will finish with the, the first realization that are used when the speaker later realized something. Here we have an example. Uh, so they are making the house and the ball turned out to be iron. This example does not seem to involve any inference at all, at least in the sense we have previously defined it. So although mirative overton of inference evidential are usually expressed by the further realization, the further realization need not involve inference. So. Uh, oh, one moment. Before evidentiality and mirativity are distinct category, whereas the former is concerned with the speaker's sort of information, the other express the speaker's surprise. 
Now, complex uh, in our way, complex mirativity might be the mark of an abductive inference and its constitutive triggering surprise. Mirativity is an indication of the source of information, an abductive inference. The expression of surprise is itself an indication of the source of information, and we cannot choose this thing between an evidential and a complex mirativity. For us, it is interesting to understand the evolution of language through their expression of knowledge related to their process, their piece of evidence, sensitive, surprise, inference. So for that, it's important to understand their structure itself. We do not claim to have definitively defined or ordered the concept of mirativity and evidentiality, but we have clarified what a complex mirativity is in comparison with the so-called inferred evidential. On the basis, we have recognized that when they are ground on abduction, complex mirative marker might be concerned with the sort of information, like inferred evidential. And um, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if I already have passed, maybe. <laughs> and I list here all the reference. Thanks.